Hello there, and let's uh, finish up chapter four. And this is the slide that we left off in the last video, I believe. And we just came to this one. And I'll be real honest about this uh, particular slide. I put this in here with the intention of you um, learning to use your cal make sure you can use your calculator to do this particular problem. And uh, that's what I would just like you to do now. So. Um, I don't really expect you to do this longhand. Um, so this is what you should get if you put this into your calculator. If you're not sure how to do this, we've probably talked about it in class, I hope, up to this point. Um, we'll go over it in class, but you can input these numbers as a fraction. Uh, if you look for the A, B over C button on your calculator, if you, if you bought that Texture Instruments TI 30X, 2s that I've probably talked about in class. You can just put that in times and you should get that. Remember that that means that that six repeats uh, on and on and on. Same thing right here. You can use this fraction button, put in two thirds, and you can just put that in. The, the point of the slide is if you did have to figure this out by hand, which would be quite frustrating, um, you would have to follow the order of operations where you would do the multiplication first, the division, because the division is to the right, you would do the multiplication first. First, you would do this second, and you would do this third, okay? But we just want you to be able to put this in the calculator. So if you would do that, and this is what you should come up with. Again, that six is repeating there, which is what that bar on top means. Uh, if you're not sure how to do that, bring it to class. We'll get it worked out together. Um, in your time uh, this week. And so let's move on to the bottom of page 11 is where I am now. And let's talk about estimating. And in this particular problem it says, well which of the following is the best estimate of 4.8 times 52? So basically what we're wanting you to do is just think what would, what would make sense to round these numbers off and as I showed you right here, that 4.8, that's about 5, and 52 is about 50. So that would give you a, a general idea that a pretty good estimate of that value would be about 250. So that's what they're looking at um, if you get into estimation questions uh, like that. Or like this one here, the same idea that, that 309 is about 300, that 199 is about 200. So a good estimate there would be 100. Again, it's the type of thing you would do if you were in a hurry, you're doing some quick math in your head on the run, you would just round numbers off and, and get, it's about $100 um, in that particular question there. And if we did one more, and uh, this one, it's not much more difficult, but you have to, you're doing division here. If uh, you want to know how many Xbox Online games could sell for $149, if it's selling for about 150, okay, if you know you have that much money, you could say you have about that, and again, you're estimating here, and you could think, well, you could purchase about about 10 games, doing the math that particular way there. So, um, and then we have uh, a couple more questions to go here. And let's see, this says, which of the following is the best estimate for those two values. So again, if you use those numbers, uh, rounding those numbers like that, you would have just about four right there. So estimating, just rounding to where it makes sense right there. And hopefully that makes sense to you as well. Okay, well, let's take a look at uh, this uh, Panama Canal question. Uh, we're not doing rounding anymore. We're actually pulling our calculators out. This says how much longer is the Suez Canal and basically it's a subtraction question. How much longer is it? So you pull out your calculator, you throw in those values right there and subtract it and it's 69 and 2 tenths miles longer right there. So really what you're doing, as long as you can input the numbers correctly, it's you have to figure out that that's a subtraction question there. Okay. Let's uh, continue on to page 14 in your notes. Uh, we have a question that says the IRS allowed a tax deduction of 37.5 cents per mile for mileage driven for business purposes. What 
deduction in dollars would be allowed for driving 9,143 miles. Well, one thing that this book does that um, you just need to be aware of that this this particular notation is in cents. Okay, that's 37 and a half cents. So it's 37 pennies and half a more penny, right there. Where it, what we're used to seeing is dollar signs, where it would have been point three seven about thirty seven cents and they go ahead and take it out to another half cent right there but that's really what we're used to but if you see this symbol right here there that's actually talking cents like here's a more simple example this twenty five that's twenty five cents that's a quarter okay or you could call it twenty five cents like that where you have the decimal where it's really talking about dollars okay so um, if that helps, um, what we would have to do here is realize that, hey, you're, you're getting 37 and a half cents for every mile. So you want to know how many is that. So you're going to multiply those two numbers together, which comes out to that many cents. Now remember, that's cents, not dollars. So if you want, oops, I overlapped a little bit in my PowerPoint there. But if you wanted dollars right here, this would make more sense to us right there. Either one of these answers would really be okay. They are sorry about that overlapping of the equal sign, but I think we'll be okay with that there. So that's what we're like. It's a multiplication question. That's the main thing you could figure out. Just put it in your calculator at that point there. So uh, bottom of page 14, car loan payment, $7,382.52 is to be paid off in 36 monthly payments. How much is each monthly payment? Well, this is a division question right there. Okay, you have the money is being divided into 36 payments. So it comes out to be $205.07. And hopefully that makes sense for you. So again, the nice thing about chapter four is if you've got the basics down as far as how to turn these into, uh, into uh, math problems, then you just use your calculator. The computation is kind of taken, hopefully, your stress down because you've got your calculator uh, to help you with that. Okay, uh, this is our last page, I think. Yay, page 15, let's wrap this up. Now, you have a limited edition Jackie Robinson poster. The dimensions are 19 and 3 tenths inches by 27 and 4 tenths inches. Find the area of the poster. Well, that's a multiplication question. Okay, it's just basically uh, you're finding the area, a rectangle. All right, you got uh, what the shorter size is 19.3, and the longer size 27.4, and we learned that area is length times width earlier. So you're just gonna multiply those like we did right there. Put it in your calculator. There you go. You've got it. Again, the area is in inches squared. That's gonna become a bigger deal later. Uh, and we talked about how what you're doing when you find that is you're just it's like you're chopping this into squares. Uh, that has this many squares on each side there and let's do the last question here this uh, multi-step uh, question and we'll be done with chapter four yay so what you see happening here is now that you have your calculator the expectation that will go up that you can take uh, a paragraph turn it into a math problem and solve a problem right there so here we have a driver filling a gas tank noted the this is what the odometer read Okay, and then after the next filling, it read this. Okay, so he fills up his gas tank. Before he did it, it had, it had this mileage. Drove, ended up with this mileage, and then he figured out that it took 16 and a half gallons to fill the tank. So they're asking how many miles per gallon did the driver get? Well, in order to do this, the first thing we need to do is figure out, well, how many total miles did he drive? And you would find that by subtracting. He drove 498 uh, and 3 tenths miles, or almost 500 miles. Okay, well, since we want to know miles per gallon, remember what we learned where you take miles, division means per, and then it's per gallon, so you're going to divide. This means divide. You're going to take 498 divided by 16.5. And what you come out with there is about 30 and 2 tenths miles per gallon right there. So you have uh, 
there you have it, chapter four. So once you get get your calculator figured out, make sure you can order, compare uh, decimals, multiply by tens, divide by tens, and then apply the, the questions here, and you will um, you'll be in great shape for chapter four. So that's it, and we'll see you soon for chapter five.